In today's quick tip video, we're going to be looking at how to use the pulse generator on the Tracker 3200S. The pulse generator is essentially a built-in power supply inside the Tracker 3200S that allows you to essentially functional test certain types of devices on a circuit card. In this case, we might be using it to turn on a relay or bias a phototransistor, something of that nature that we use a voltage to turn on a device and then we use the tracker to monitor the output of that device to see if it's working. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. So we'll start by testing a relay. The relay is located right here on this card. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach the pulse generator to the coil side of the relay. And then we're going to use the tracker to monitor the contacts on the relay. Now on the pulse generator controls, you have the ability to either select a DC or a pulse level type of setting. So the pulse level essentially outputs a square wave that we can control the polarity and the duty cycle on. So to control that, we just press it once and you see you've got a single solid light. That means it's in DC mode. If you press it again and it's flashing, so it's that's in the pulse mode. We're going to be using this in the DC mode. So I'm going to go just go ahead and make a it says solid. Now this button here can control what the polarity of the output is. So if you press it once, that means it's negative. If you press it again, that means it's positive. Over here on the display, it'll show you what the setting is. So we can see we have it set for DC and a positive DC level. So now we can press the level button. That's this LVL button. And then we're going to put our probe on the relay contact pad. And then we'll use the up and down arrow keys to change the voltage output from the pulse generator. So I'll just go ahead and start increasing that. And you'll see on this relay, as we get close to about two and a half volts, you'll see the relay actually activate. Right about there. See, so now we're seeing a short circuit from common to this pad. That means that the relay contacts have closed because we were powering the coil on this relay. So we're literally doing a functional test on the relay. Just so you can see the pulse mode in operation, we're going to go ahead and set this for positive pulse. We'll press the DC pulse button until it's flashing. And then we're going to put it into a positive pulsing mode. You see positive pulsing mode. And then we will just go ahead and start increasing that. What we're going to see on the relays, we're going to see it going between an open and close. We're essentially going to be turning the relay on and off very fast. The frequency of the square wave depends on what you have your range set to. And you can see in this case, it's 200 hertz. So we're going to be outputting a 200 hertz square wave from the pulse generator. So let's go ahead and increase the voltage. We'll press the level button and then use the up arrow key to start turning on the relay. We saw it turn on at about two and a half volts earlier with the DC signal. And when we get to that level, we should see it start to do a little bit of both. Right there, you can see it kind of going on and off. See it both in an open and a closed state. And between, because the display is trying to draw between the two at 200 hertz, we're getting a little connecting line there. We can maybe clean that up a little bit just by increasing the voltage. So that's pretty interesting. I also want to show you how to test an optocoupler. These devices are a little bit harder to test because the, you really can't see if they're operating. So what we'll do is we'll hook the pulse generator to the LED side of the, of the optocoupler. And then I'm going to hold, hold my probe to the phototransistor collector connection on the other side. So when we power the pulse generator, it's going to start putting power to the LED. And that LED will start shining light on the phototransistor inside the optocoupler and essentially biasing that transistor. So I'm going to set this to a DC level. And then we'll select our level. And then we'll go ahead and start increasing the voltage. And you'll eventually see it start to bias the phototransistor. You'll see it go from an open to a diode signature. You start just start starting to go there. There we go. So we can actually see that the LED is working and that it's also biasing the phototransistor in a way we would expect a transistor to turn on. So the pulse generator can be a very useful device and you also can control this from Huntron Workstation. So let me show you where you do that. So what you would do, of course, is create yourself a test in Huntron Workstation. So you can see we have U1 selected. So what you do is select the pins tab you want to select the pin that you want the pulse generator to activate when it's testing it. So in this case, we'll select pin number two and you scroll just a bit to the right. And here you see all of the pulse generator controls. So the first one we would set would be the polarity of the pulse. 
So it can be positive, negative, or positive, negative if you're using a pulse mode. We'll just leave this for positive. And then the pulse type. So you can see there, of course, have it selected off. You can go to a DC or a pulse. We'll select DC. And then you can select a level. You can see I had it pre-selected here at 4 volts. But you can set that anywhere from 0 up to 10 volts. So we'll select maybe, how about 5 volts? And then if you are using a pulse mode, you can select the duty cycle from 50% all the way down to 2%. So when the test gets to pin number 2, the pulse generator will turn on and do whatever it is you are trying to accomplish at that point. So of course you would have the cables connected up ahead of time um, and ready to go. So when you run the test, everything will work the way you expect it. So that is the pulse generator function on the Huntron Tracker 3200S. Please take the time to look at all the other YouTube videos on the Huntron YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching.